American Machinist webcast titled Tools to Monitor and Maximize Your Cobot Work Cells, sponsored by Universal Robots. I'm Robert Brooks. I am the editor and content director of American Machinist. Before we begin, let me explain how you can participate in today's presentation. First, if at any time you're having audio difficulties or the slides are not advancing, simply hit your F5 key to refresh the webcast console. If you're running pop-up blocking software, you will need to disable it to view the webinar. If you have any technical difficulties during today's <laughs> I'm sorry, if you are having technical difficulties during today's session, please pre please press the question mark help button in the upper right corner to receive assistance in solving common issues. This webinar technology allows you to resize the presentation by clicking the maximize icon in the upper right corner to enlarge the window. We welcome your questions during today's event. To submit your questions, simply type the question into the ask a question window on the left side of your screen and then hit the submit button. We'll be answering as many questions as possible during the Q&A session that will follow the main presentation. But please feel free to send in your questions at any time and we'll add them to the queue. Also, please be aware that today's session is being recorded and it will be available on the New Equipment Digest and American Machinist websites within the next day for you to review. You'll be notified by email when the archive is available. When the webinar ends, please take a moment to complete the feedback form that will appear on your screen. Now, I want to welcome our speakers. Silas Neal is the Channel Development Manager for Universal Robots. After nearly a decade in business operations, Silas entered the automation space and gained six years of experience as a sales engineer with Cognex and Keyence. In 2019, Silas joined Universal Robots with a strong background in robotics and machine vision. His experience in 2D and 3D vision has carried over into the robotic bin picking arena, and he regularly consults with clients and prospects on this challenging area of automation. Silas holds a bachelor degree from Roger Williams University, and he's based in the greater Boston area. Tyler Bouchard is CEO and co-founder of Flexbotics. Tyler co-founded Flexbotics, a software company dedicated to making automation equipment more productive in 2018 with Tyler Modelski. Before Flexbotics, he spent most of his career in senior commercial roles for factory automation and motion control organizations, where he learned to solve and sell complex automation and motion control solutions. Tyler attended the Northeastern University Demore McKim MBA program, and he has a degree in biomechanical engineering from WPI. When Tyler is not working on Flexbotics, you can find him playing basketball, spending time with family and friends, and traveling. For more information on Silas and Tyler, check out the speaker details tab on your console. And with that, welcome to both of you. Silas, the floor is yours. All right, awesome. Thank you, Robert. Pleasure working with you as always. Um, first off, a big thank you to NED and American Machinists for having us today. I'm very grateful for the opportunity. Tyler, thank you as always. It's, it's great to be here again with the Flexbotics team, the whole crew working to support us. So. It's always good to be back here. So thank you for the introduction. Um, my name is Silas Neal, and I am a channel development manager with Universal Robots. I'm based out of uh, Southern Rhode Island, and my role here is to support our distribution partners, our systems integrators, solution partners like Flexbotics to make sure that the customer gets what they're looking for and we have a completely satisfied customer. So I'm gonna start things off today taking about 10 minutes just to run through a little bit about Universal Robots, who we are, what we do in the space, give you some good examples and some things to think about with what our product can do. But I'm gonna make sure to leave a lot of time for Tyler and the Flexbotics team because they have some really exciting stuff that plays really, really well into the machining uh, world. So to start things off, our vision is to create a world where people work with robots, not like robots. And we want to empower customers to be able to do that and, and make their own decisions. 
So we're very excited about that. Um, next slide, please. Universal Robots was founded in 2005 by some Danish grad students. Um, and we brought our first commercially viable robot to market in 2008. We currently hold between 40 and 50% of the global market share in the collaborative robot space with over 60,000 deployments. Uh, we recently hit 1,000 employees globally here at Universal Robots, which is a milestone for us. We have over 20 offices in 20 countries, and we're supported by Teradyne, based just north of here in North Reading, Massachusetts. And we also have over uh, 1,100 partners in our distribution network systems mm -hmm. integration program, and then our ecosystem called UR Plus ecosystem, which offers full application components, peripherals, and anything needed by our, our customers and our end users to satisfy their needs. Next slide, please. We are headquartered in Odense, Denmark, west of Copenhagen. All of our robots are manufactured there and shipped there. No supply chain issues this, uh, in this current ecosystem that we're working in. We can have robots in as little as, as a week and a half to two weeks. We have a headquarters here in Boston, which is primarily driven by R&D, product management. And then we have a, um, an office, a subdivision out of Detroit, where we stock all of our spare parts supporting North America. Next slide, please. When you think about traditional automation compared to collaborative automation, historically, that traditional automation is a fixed hard installation and it needs to surround itself by a physical barrier, some kind of a hard guarding that separates the humans from the robotic automation that's taking place. And these installs, again, are oftentimes very, very high volume, high run parts that run for many, many years. And oftentimes the product mix is very low. With collaborative robots, it's opened up a lot of doors for end users to be able to implement uh, easily into retrofit, and you no longer need that physical separation. And in many circumstances, you can have a collaborative robot working side by side with a human being on that given operation. Not to mention they pop out of the box, they have very limited uh, power requirements, and they make for very easy retrofits. Next slide, please. Collaborative robots, the term cobots, they are inherently safe and again, they can work alongside humans. They're very easy to program, so they oftentimes don't require a lot of previous coding experience, which opens up a lot of resources within facilities. All of our cobots run on standard 120 volt power for an out of box experience that's very seamless, and they're very easy to redeploy into other operations. So on a weekly basis, we're talking to customers who are implementing a robot into machine tending but from a justification standpoint, they see value in the redeployment capabilities so that they can put a welding torch or a deburring tool or something on it for secondary operations to make that payback significantly quicker. And then when you compare the cost of collaborative automation to hard automation, it can be anywhere from a third to half of the cost of that traditional industrial automation to start that ROI clock much sooner. Next slide, please. Collaborative robots open up a tremendous amount of resources within a facility because they give the end user and the programmer the ability to utilize really any logically minded individual to program that robot. So it opens up all of those resources. The small footprint, as you can see here behind us, makes it really easy to retrofit into legacy equipment. So we use the analogy retrofit of, of houses and renovating houses more often than building new houses because we talk to a lot of end users who have existing legacy equipment where historically there has been a human operator working that machine. The flexibility and the ability to move the systems around to different processes opens up a lot of doors for them when it comes to the redeployment of that system. Next slide, please. All right. So what I'll do next is kind of take you through our product offering and how our users make selections of the product. Next slide, please. 
Universal Robots is in the business of manufacturing safe collaborative robot arms. And we rely on our partners, much like Flexbotics, to make all of those complementary accessories to go along with it, whether it's a simple gripper, a more complex machine interface, or a full 3D bin picking solution. This makes it very easy for us and our partners to make a decision about what robot arm to utilize, because we can do that simply based on the payload of the robot and the reach of the robot. It makes for very easy specification. And as you see here, we make five collaborative robot arms. The UR3 has a 500 millimeter reach. It's capable of uh, picking up three kilogram, has plus or minus 360 degrees rotation in all of the joints and infinite rotation on the wrist joints. This makes it a great robot for tabletop applications, light assembly, or anything where high precision is required. The UR5E is a five kilogram robot with an 850 millimeter reach. This is a great uh, robot for mid-sized payload applications. And what we find is with this robot, they're oftentimes very quick to deploy. It's an easy robot to get out the door and, and set up in a customer site very, very quickly. The UR16 in the middle there is a 16 kg robot with a 900 millimeter reach. This is going to be ideal for those heavier payload machine tending applications, or maybe applications where you can pick up multiple parts and take advantage of that 16 kilogram payload. We have the UR10E, which has a 1.3 meter reach and 12 and a half kilogram payload. This is our most popular robot. It's a workhorse. It's very uh, forward thinking. It allows customers to future proof the, the application. And we see this robot in a lot of palletizing CNC machine tending, any higher payloads. And then most recently, we've introduced the UR20, which has a 1.75 meter reach, 20 kg payload. This is going to open up a lot of doors for our users within the machine tending space, the welding space, uh, and of course, palletizing as well. Next slide, please. Our latest generation of robot is the E-Series robot, and it has a built-in force torque sensor in the wrist as you can see here. And what that does is it opens up, it, it enables the robot to have a sense of touch, much like a human does. So it can make real-time adaptations on the fly rather than always having to rely on a series of pre-programmed waypoints. We have 17 different safety functions and a number of certifications. Um, with only making five robot arms, we rely on a very small handful of different joint sizes, and there's a lot of carryover between our different products. So it makes it really easy to have field replaceable joints and minimal stock for those. On the top right of the screen, we have our teach pendant. This is our programming environment where Polyscope lives. And we use the verbiage teaching rather than programming with our product, because in many circumstances, we're gonna physically move that robot around, teach it where to go, rather than using traditional code. Next slide, please. You can think about a collaborative robot as being a tool, very similar to a wrench or a hammer, or maybe a screwdriver, but it no longer needs to be all or nothing when it comes to automation. We can look at automating just a part of a process and have, help a human operator through that process maybe remove some of the ergonomic issues with that or increase the throughput minimally. Next slide, please. <clears throat> and here we have a number of different applications that collaborative robots excel at every day, packaging and palletizing. You think about any of those path dependent operations like gluing, dispensing and welding where you need a constant tool speed we also support machine tending when it comes to injection molding, the CNC space. Um, but we also are interested in things that we don't see. We work with customers all the time on sanding applications within the woodworking or pursuing cleaning of parts with CO2. And with that, I'm going to hand things over to Tyler, talk a little bit more about the machine tending space specifically. Thanks, everybody. Tyler? Awesome. Thanks, Silas. Reminder, I'm uh, Tyler Bouchard and with Flexbotics. So if we go to the next slide, actually. So today we're going to talk about the Flex Tend, uh, specifically for machine tending applications like Stylus was talking about. Um, go to the next slide. 
So a little bit about Flexbotics. Uh, we were founded in 2018, like I said, with the other co-founder, Tyler Modelski, who's to the left over here. Can't see him right now. Um, but yeah, we're located in Boston. Uh, we have about uh, 11 full-time employees. And our mission has been to help uh, CNC shops digitally transform themselves and help them go through that process, whether that be automation and process, and help them get the most out of their capital equipment and their people. So next slide. So like I said, we're focusing on the Flex 10 today, and the Flex 10 is a turnkey machine tending solution. Um, it provides you everything that you need to be able to get a machine tending solution up. And essentially what we're looking to provide for you is within two months from the start where you say, hey, I have a machine that I wanna be able to automate um, to actually being able to run parts like you can see behind right now, uh, within two months, manage that whole process, implementation, uh, validation, and then support after that whole process. Um, so it's literally all the technology, all of the third-party peripherals that you need, including our third-party peripherals, uh, to be able to get you up and running, design it, implement it, and then support it going forward. Next slide. So to highlight some of the features of what Flex10 uh, provides, um, you can't see it right here, but the, behind here is a, actually an interface that we have called the Flex CNC. So it's a standardized interface to be allowed to use with multiple CNC machines. Silas hit on this, uh, talking about how you have your CNC shop, you're gonna have uh, CNCs from 1990 all the way to 2023, where they just came off the pallet. So we understand that and we provide an interface to be able to allow to easily connect to those things within four hours or less, um, and part of the process uh, of us coming on site and being able to do that inter uh, interfacing. Um, we also provide uh, efficient design, integration, and training. So when we say efficient design, what we're talking about is that we're using uh, standardized third-party components to be able to optimize and create a modular setup for yourself to be able to uh, rapidly come up with a design for you and then rapidly be able to integrate since we've had multiple integrations where we've done that before uh, and be able to really accelerate that process. And then uh, we have basically the ability to provide training for you. So we do full validation, provide you paperwork documentation at the end of, uh, of an install. Uh, and allow you to be able to empower you to essentially run that going forward. But if things arise, we're there to be able to help you uh, and be able to support that. Um, I talked about it a little bit, but the modular design is something that's really important. We understand you might come to us with a job where you say, I need to run this part uh, and I'm gonna run it for the next six months. And you might be thinking, well, what am I gonna do the six months after that and the six months after that? And so what we do is we take your requirements and what parts do you wanna run? Do you want to run it on multiple machines? Do you want to be able to redeploy your robot on multiple machines? Uh, and we take that information, those requirements, and we create designs for you that can be able to accommodate that and also give you the ability to be able to rapid changeover for yourself. You know, so you can be able to go and say, hey, what if I want to run parts for one week and then I want to do changeover the next week and run other parts? How can we enable you and give you that ability? And that's what we do when we're considering our design process for you to help you be able to do that. And then with that coupled, we have essentially some powerful operations management tools to be able to essentially support um, and empower your workforce to be able to manage your collaborative robot once it's uh, within your facility. So we have the ability to go in and be able to see uh, everything that's going on with your robot, which is Polyscope, which is the software that the Universal Robots runs off of. We can see that. Um, we can see log files for it. We can make changes for you. So we're there helping you troubleshooting, diagnosing issues that are going on, and then be able to get that robot back up and running. And with that, we also have software that helps you, you can see on the screen over there, that helps you essentially the operator go through either workflows, uh, take information from your back office systems like G-code programs, even if you have your robot programs you're managing, tooling instructions, take that information, present it down into the work cell, help people go through those workflows and be able to get jobs set up and keep them running continuously. Next slide. So talking about a few of the technology, uh, Silas mentioned uh, redeployment, which is a big aspect of um, Universal Robots, the lightweight nature of it, the reprogrammability. Repro um, we also provide a tool called Flex Reference that provides an external offset for the robot. Imagine it's a, uh, like a homing beacon for the robot to understand this is where I'm located in my relative understanding of where uh, the program is supposed to be. So it's a mechanical and uh, software setup. Um, there's a thing called the UR Plus program where you can be able to have software plugins to allow you to run third-party software like ourselves easily on there uh, and be able to essentially run the flex reference from there. So within uh, two minutes, you can lock out with the mechanical hardware, provide an external uh, offset for the robot, uh, and then uh, have your program up and running uh, very quickly. So it allows for that redeployability of it. Next slide. 
I talked about this briefly already, but the Flex CNC, which is our standard, standardized interface for uh, the UR into your CNC. Uh, essentially, it's a hardware middleware box that sits between the robot and the CNC itself, connect to the robot over Ethernet, uh, and connect over Ethernet over to the CNC machine. And then with a few configurations, you're able to now have a communication pathway between your robot and your CNC, which you can actually build programs within Polyscope with our nodes and the native uh, Polyscope nodes on uh, Universal Robots. So all of the interfaces you see right there, Kuma, Mazak, Haas, Fanuc, uh, all the, the name brands, uh, we have both legacy and new generation compatibility with that. So uh, it allows, you know, whatever machine you're looking at, uh, you know, we'll have a way to be able to essentially automate it using the standardized interface and then have a repeatable way to be able to program and standardize your training for everybody on your staff to understand how to be able to operate these things. Next slide. So, um, you know, kind of talking about why would you use the Flex 10 services and products for, for your setup? Um, and I'll kind of rattle off a, a few of the, the main things that are, that are benefits for this. But um, one of the first things is uh, rapid design and integration. Uh, you want to be able to quickly come to us with a project, take that project, you know, that idea state, and actually materialize it into something, right? So if you're purchasing a cobot, you want to be able to have that cobot up and running uh, to be able to get you know, uh, your ROI, but most importantly, get your machine running and increasing the utilization and capacity of that machine so you increase your output. So by shortening that time frame, you're going to be able to realize the benefits of uh, purchasing your cobot much quicker and, uh, and get that up and running much quicker. The second thing is, um, you know, being able to uh, eliminate from your side, you know, what you focus on is producing parts within your shop. That's your main focus and that's your expertise. Our expertise is creating automation solutions and installing automation solutions for you. So you focus on what you're good at, we'll focus on what we're good at, and that doesn't allow you to have to have to worry about, you know, doing an additional project to all the other projects that you're working on, along with the production you're trying to get out. And we'll focus on getting the automation so that you can enable to do the things that you're good at. Um, third thing is, uh, with all the technology that we're providing in this setup, we're allowing you to maximize the functionality out of your CNC and your cobot. So the ability to take the Flex CNC and actually communicate directly with your CNC controller allows you to do things like loading G-code programs into memory so you can run more lights out operation for one sequence from one G-code program to another. Uh, be able to the ability to write macros onto your CNC to be able to account for real-time offsets or from toolware. Um, so things like that allow you to be able to run your cobots longer on your machines, and then of course giving you the benefits that I talked about before: higher utilization, you know, better capacity of your machines, and better output. Um, and the fourth thing I think it's uh, a really important portion of this is that we're not done after we design and integrate. We're there uh, with you essentially in your CNC cell at all times, virtually being able to see what's going on. So we have full visibility of what's going on. We've designed your cell, we've installed your cell, so we know all the different variables that are involved with it. So whenever an uh, issue arises, and you know, uh, it does happen, right, within anything, you run your shop, you know that things are gonna go wrong sometimes. When they do go wrong, we're gonna be able to rapidly diagnose and troubleshoot things much quicker because we're gonna have a very robust understanding of it. We're gonna be able to see everything that's going on and then we'll be able to help you get that back up and running and then, you know, like everything, have those CNC cutting chips. So um, providing that support um, for you at all times, I think, is something that's really important for you to maximize, uh, you know, the return from, uh, from one of your cobots. Next slide. So now if you're interested, you want to say, okay, well, how do I proceed and, and be able to utilize this, uh, this service and products from us? Um, we like to make it in you know, three easy steps for you. Uh, the first is we have a questionnaire with about 25, 30 questions that we can walk you through or you can fill it out on your own so you can be able to understand um, essentially what are your design requirements. And we want this to be not just by near-term design requirements. What do I want to think two, three years from now and be able to bake those in? And we can have it where we can triage it where we can you know, start off with we'll accomplish this and later we'll accomplish this. But if we can bake everything at the beginning, then we can optimize that design for you. So going through that process, giving us all the information around your CNC, your outcome, uh, all that information, uh, provide that for us. And so then at that point, um, you give us that information, we'll tell you feasibility of not, uh, whether or not we can do it, and then provide you a budgetary um, proposal on what the cost will be. Uh, at that point, we basically require a 5K design PO to be placed at that point. 
um, and then we go and move on to essentially the final proposal that's within one to two weeks. We have a guarantee for our customers that if we are over our budgetary proposal amount when we provide the final proposal, then we will waive the design PO, and that's something that you don't have to uh, pay if you don't want to, or you can still proceed. So kind of gives you that confidence that, hey, we're going to be coming in at the number that we said that we were going to in that, uh, that final proposal. So if at that point you have the choice to be able to accept that proposal uh, and then uh, procurement of parts happens at that point and then we essentially uh, look to be able to distribute everything onto site. We look to get everything onto site within four to six weeks, like we said, that rapid um, both design and uh, implementation of things. And then we, the step three is we essentially, we come on site, schedule time, and it takes us about two to three days and we do everything from the full integration to validation to actually running a part and then provide you all the support documentation requirements after. And then after that point, we can provide training on site and remote training because we have visibility into everything and, and can provide that for you. Next steps. Just to highlight again, uh, kind of the power of what Flex Connect is providing you. And this is kind of the, the crux of how this is able to provide the most optimized setup for you from both basically a support and process control setup. Um, we're able to see essentially your robot state um, so we can actually know when a robot's gone down, maybe even before you've seen a robot go down. So we can provide, you know, a level of support where we're actually seeing problems happening in real time and can be able to start diagnosing something uh, even before uh, maybe you've reached out to us to, uh, to talk about that. Um, if your CNC machine comes with MT Connect, which is a standard industrial protocol for CNC machines, we can actually see machine state too. So we can understand what's going on with your machine. Everything's a system, right? So we understand both what's happening with the robot and with the CNC. Um, we provide our support five days a week, 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So uh, if you want to reach out to us and, and have any questions about your or trying to diagnose an issue, you can always be able to reach out to us. Um, and then the second portion of Flex Connect is the, the um, process control. And to kind of go into that a little bit um, deeper is uh, it's a job revision control set up for you. So it allows you to take all the information from your job. So you can imagine it's your, your recipe of your job. You have your work instructions, you have your tooling instructions, you have your G code programs, your robot programs. We provide the ability to do digital media steps so you can actually take photos and videos. We do that on site when we do the implementation. So you actually have those jobs that are built for you with all the media built for you, but you can add new media for yourself. You package that up and it's revision control. So you'll be able to uh, create uh, multiple revisions of your, your jobs and ensure that your operators and machinists are running the correct versions of jobs, the correct versions of programs, so you can reduce scrap quality events uh, in, in, in uh, scenarios like that. So something that really helps with that process control type of setup for, for yourself and for your shop. Uh, and can be used something that's in conjunction with a robot or without a robot. So something that can be used facility-wide uh, on all of your CNCs to be able to provide that um, a type of uh, provision control for yourself. Next slide. So uh, go over the uh, overall pricing for this. Uh, so this is not uh, something that's a surprise. Um, we like to be very transparent about this. So the budgets that we're, we're talking about for systems like this are with robot included and everything is around 85,000 to 115,000. Um, for simpler applications, we'll talk about with lays, maybe one part, one operation that, that it's being done. You're going to see that on the lower end, 80 to 85K. And on the higher end, if you have, say, a milling application, you have multiple operations, multiple devices, multiple parts running that, maybe even multiple machines. In that case, you're going to be having, you know, a little bit on the higher end of that. Within that uh, amount, 75 to 100K of that is hardware. Like I said, that's including the robot. That's including all the peripherals. All the, our equipment is included within there as well. Um, you have your work holding, your auto door, uh, all of that. Everything needed to be able to run your, uh, your automated CNC with that hardware uh, is included within that. Our services for design and insula installation is 10 to 15K uh, that we provide. And that's based on the complexity of the application that we're doing. And then for our support and software license for Flex Connect, we have a 3K recurring um, that's, uh, that's included with that. So with that, I'll go to the next slide, and we actually have essentially an overview, a uh, technical overview of what the uh, what you see behind us. Um, so whenever you want, you can start that video and uh, enjoy.
In this video, we have a demo running of the Flex 10 to CNC tending solution for Universal Robots on our in-house track CNC machine. Flex 10 consists of five key elements, which we will go into details on. These include the robot stand and reconfigurable infeed, the grippers, work holding, and auto door from our partner companies, the Flex CNC and Flex Reference UR caps, the Flex Connect job management and support platform, and full robot application programming via our turnkey integrations from our applications engineering team. The first part of the solution is the robot stand and infeed. In the setup, the infeed is attached to a mobile robot base. The infeed is designed with removable and customizable panels that allow for staging of various different types of stock parts, including rectangular bar, pucks, round bar, and flat round bar. The panels are designed with reuse in mind to be able to handle different sizes of similar parts. During the design process, we will consult with you to determine the variety of panels needed. For robot and CNC peripherals, we have partnered with a variety of companies to help ease the integration of the gripper, work holding, and auto door for the application. For grippers, we are using both Robotique and Shunk. Robotique has a variety of useful electrical grippers that are great for applications with more difficult geometric requirements. Because of their design, these grippers can be easily commanded to open and close at varying distances which will be used as part of our rapid changeover software. Work holding is one of the key aspects of CNC tensing as it is the real driver of how parts need to be presented to the robot. For automated CNC tending, automatic work holdings are a necessity to clamp and unclamp fixtured parts for machining. Shunk offers a wide variety of pneumatic vices for milling operations, which are completely compatible with the Flex CNC interfacing software. In the case of Lays, Flex CNC can interface directly to the CNC machine itself to open and close the chuck. As part of the pre-install process of Flex 10, Flexbotix application engineers will help assess the work holding to fully understand and test the fixturing requirements prior to the install. The final aspect of machine tending peripherals are the auto doors. In cases where a CNC machine needs to be retrofitted, we recommend using Mitico. Mitico has a variety of pneumatic and servo auto doors that are completely compatible with the Flex CNC interface. It also has built-in safety features for things like unexpected obstructions. In cases where a built-in auto door is already installed, the Flex CNC interface has the ability to control these via M codes using the G code program loading feature. Flex 10 comes fully equipped with both the Flex CNC and Flex Reference UR caps. As mentioned earlier, Flex CNC is used to perform all the robot to CNC and robot to peripheral communications within the application. All of the communications and controls are set up and verified on site by our Flexbotics application engineers. The Flex CNC is comprised of two components the Flex CNC interface box and the Flex CNC UR cap. The Flex CNC interface box is the physical interface between the robot and the machine. It connects to the robot with an ethernet cable to the robot port and connects to the machine over a variety of interfaces including ethernet from the machine port, serial via the USB port, or digital IO via an input. The other connections to the box are all digital outputs and inputs using M12 connectors that are dedicated to various peripherals like the door and the vise. In the demo program, you can see the Flex CNC is being used for the following. First, it is controlling all the peripherals in the cell via the Flex CNC peripheral nodes. This is used to control both the Shunk Vice and the Mitico Auto Door in this application. You can see this is as simple as adding the Flex CNC peripheral node to the program and toggling the 24 volt outputs high and low as needed. Second, it is being used to load G code programs to the machine. This gives us a lot of ability to accommodate a variety of needs from an interfacing perspective and also can be used to run M codes. In addition to loading G-code programs, we have the ability to write macros to certain CNCs to apply real-time offsets for things like toolware. Third, it is controlling the cycle start of the CNC machine. This is a 24 volt output wired to the cycle start button via a relay. There is a dedicated program node used to trigger the cycle start in the program. And finally, detecting the machine cycle completion via the wait for CNC node 
is the final aspect of the FlexCNC interface. In all applications, including this one, the robot needs to know when the cycle is complete and that it is okay to enter the machine. The FlexCNC can do this multiple ways and it is set up on site during our integrations. The Flex Reference is a referencing tool for the Universal Robot. This provides the robot with a six degrees of freedom reference point that all programming is done relative to. This allows users to move the Flex 10 setup between machines without extensive reprogramming, but it is also used as an insurance policy in case things like bumps or maintenance move the robot stand. The reference is composed of two mechanical components, which together are called the Flex Lockout. The first is the station interface block, which can be installed inside the CNC machine bed or bolted to the outside of the machine. The second is the end of arm tool piece, which provides the mating mechanism between the robot arm and the station interface piece. The flex reference also has a UR cap, which allows for easy updating of the reference points as well as other process tools such as operator toolbars and the approach position. The final portion of the Flex 10 solution is the Flex Connect platform. The platform is comprised of two different components. The Flex Edge, which is an edge device that is installed into the work cell during the integration of the system, and Flex Control, which is a cloud-based software to perform monitoring, documentation management, and program revision control slash backups. The first benefit of the platform is that it enables our applications team to perform full remote support of the solution. We partner with TeamViewer to provide our engineers with remote access to the system. This allows full visibility into systems logs in real time, as well as the ability to live stream Polyscope. Through the live Polyscope screen, our team can help with the remote programming, as well as running interactive training sessions with the end customers to help them maintain the system. FlexConnect also provides the ability to monitor the robot. Through the FlexConnect UR cap node, custom statuses can be set at various points in the robot program. Anything from robot needs more parts to the gripper missing picking apart, a custom status can be tracked and monitored through the system providing notifications to the end user. All statuses are tracked and able to be analyzed. The Flexbotics application team robustly programs these status changes while performing the integration on site. Lastly, all step-by-step -step instructions on how to run and troubleshoot the Flex10 application are provided through FlexConnect. Flexbotics application engineers will document and create dynamic digital work instructions for the process, which can be viewed directly on a monitor at the work cell. FlexConnect can also be used to fully back up all robot and G code programs in the work cell and provides revision tracking within the Flex Control software for every program. Okay, well, that was very informative, very instructive. I really enjoyed it. I hope our, I'm sure our viewers did too. Um, so thank you. A few of our viewers have already submitted questions and we're going to jump to answering as many of those as we can. First, I wanna remind the viewers, please take a moment to complete the feedback form that will appear on your screen at the end of the webinar. Uh, and uh, so we begin. Uh, first question here. I, I don't, I don't think we should expect to see them in any kind of logical order. So they're going to come at you hard, right? Okay, guys. So, so, how should you, how should you treat a collaborative robot? How should a user treat a collaborative robot that is operated outside of the Cobot standards due to speed of operation? Sure. Yeah, that's a really good question. I think you need to take a lot of things into consideration. 
Um, speed, certainly, if you want to run them above those standard collaborative um, aspects. You also need to think about what's going on the end of the robot tool, right? If you put something incredibly sharp that might be used for piercing or something that has very high temperature, you also need to consider that. So uh, what I would suggest is in our user manual, we have the breakdown of what a risk assessment looked like. looks like has some really good details there. Talk to one of us at Universal Robots, and we can guide you along that process, and we have partners that can help you out. But we have many customers that implement our robots utilizing light curtains or any kind of physical hard guarding, safety mats, things like that. Yep. Uh, okay. Uh, tell us the benefits of using automation for CNC machine tending. Okay, take that one? Yeah, so I think if you really want to boil down the benefits of, of using automation, um, it's tied to your capital equipment, right? You purchase a CNC, you want that CNC running, and you want it running all the time. So it really comes down to when you're providing an automation solution, you want to be able to increase your utilization. And then by being more efficient and increasing the quality, you're actually increasing more capacity of your CNC operations. And then by automating it too, on top of that, you're allowing, if you're allowing multiple shifts, so say a third shift, you can add even more capacity on that. So you can take on more jobs, more cost-effective jobs, so you can be more price competitive uh, against some of your, your competitors. Uh, you can reduce the amount of rework, scrap, and quality events that you have. And at the end of the day, more output, and more output's gonna lead to more revenue. So it's a, uh, a top line and bottom line, both uh, benefit to your operations within your shop. Yeah, to, to jump off of that a little bit too, cycle time is important, but that throughput is, is much more critical, right? And I think automating with a system like this will enable you to look at a piece of equipment, one of your machines, and calculate very quickly how many pieces you can get out of that machine in a week. It takes the guesswork out of it because you know that robot is going to operate consistently and at the same speeds throughout all of your shifts that you're running that automation. Exactly, that consistency. Yep. Yeah. Uh, okay. So what factors should be considered when selecting a machine tending solution, a machine tending package, I assume, is the meaning here? Yeah, uh, I'll take that one as well. Um, so it, you should start first with what outcomes do you want, right? So you, you're coming into this, you're looking to explore automation. What are the desired outcomes that you want? And then from there, you can take the requirements to then enable you those types of outcomes. So you want to understand if I want to be able to run a, uh, we'll say, uh, a third shift lights out and I want to be able to run multiple operations and I want to uh, do real-time offsets um, based on tool wear so I can run those parts continuously. If that's the list of requirements that you have, then you should be looking at the type of machine that you're going to be automating that on. You shouldn't go to necessarily a machine that's an older machine that has less of that capability and look maybe to a, a newer machine to be able to provide that. So it, it really looks at what are the requirements, what are the operations, what's the part sizes that you're working with, um, and what are those outcomes that, that, that you want to be able to, uh, to strive for. And then that's where the power of, of Flex10, the modular design, the optimization of the design, we can take that information and be able to provide you something that's uh, you know, fully dynamic and optimized for, for your operations. Uh how can machine tending improve overall production efficiency and quality? I assume that means product quality, but maybe it means production quality. So, so how is the question really? Yeah, so like the specifics? Yeah, so it looks at um, two things. The first is it's the process control that you have going into it. So you have your process control in anything, even an automated, automated setup and a manual setup, you need to be able to have process control Am I running essentially the right program, um, running the right job, right work order, all that information. So you need to be able to present that information uh, essentially into, into the cell and then make sure that, uh, that you're, you're running those things. And then it goes back, the second thing is the consistency portion. You know if you set up your program correctly and you're running the right program, you're gonna be getting that consistent output that you have. And so you're not going to run into those quality events that may, uh, may plague that, you know, the amount of rework and headache that goes into that. Um, uh, so being able to have that consistency is gonna have you be able to improve that, that quality. So it's being able to do a repetitive task over and over again, right? That's the point of the consistency that the robot's gonna be able to provide for you. Okay, um, how about providing some examples of successful machine tending implementations? 
Yeah, I, I guess I'll talk about maybe one of the more complex ones to see what the capability is of, uh, of what, what we're able to do. So uh, one of the more complex ones we've done, it was essentially uh, we had parts that were running three operations on three separate vices with a pallet changer that was sitting within the CNC machine itself. Uh, so we provided all the interfacing for that. We had the redeployment solution with it. Uh, we programmed all the uh, pick and place points for those vices. We controlled all the logic of when those vices would need to fire, when the pallet needs to fire. Um, so we'd be able to dictate and create all the logic within that program, provided that, and then provided a full documentation setup of this is how you'd be able to operate your setup. You know, you have 200 lines of code in here right now. What does each one of these line of codes need for you? And if something goes wrong, what is the troubleshooting steps that you need to take to be able to get and resolve out of that? So uh, we've taken that information and we've enabled uh, essentially the machinists to be able to empower them to be able to, you know, essentially own the cell. So that was one of the more, you know, complicated, but we can take anything from if you have a, uh, a simple lathe application, like I said, of running one operation with, uh, with a chuck, um, be able to provide that. But, but that's hopefully a, a good example of the capability. Okay. Uh, is there any robot or cobot for maintenance of overhead power lines? Um, so in terms of overhead power lines, all of our cobots run on 120, and that's the only requirement there. You know, regular PM, there's, there's nothing when it comes to our robots. Um, no calibration on an annual basis or anything like that. There's air filters in our controllers that you can change out based on what your environment looks like, but largely no PM. Yep. Okay. okay, now we start to get a little bit more specific here. If a client is using CAM software to generate G code for an existing machine, how do you integrate that function, that setup, with the instructions required for Flexbotics part handling? Yep, that's a great question. Um, so you have essentially from your CAM software your G code program that you're going to be able to run on your CNC machine. So to be able to set up the process control portion for this in the job creation, you're gonna go into what's called Flex Control, which is an aspect of Flex Connect. Um, within there, as the engineer, you're going to say, I'm running this uh, G-code program on uh, this CNC, along with any other things that you need to be able to provide for it. Like I said, instructions, say you have your robot program. Um, you wrap that up all into your job, and then we have the ability to take that information and deploy it down directly into the cell. So the edge device that sits within here takes that information and is actually communicating to both the CNC and the robot. So we can actually take that G-code program and put it onto your CNC. We can take that robot program and put it onto your robot and vice versa. So if things have changed, say somebody makes some changes on the G-code program and you want to be able to take that revision and put it back into your repository, you can be able to download that using the interface of, of the software here as well. So that's how you can be able to uh, manage your G-code distribution from uh, essentially your back office to the work cell and back to the back office as well. And then from the actual portion of being able to run the G-code on the CNC, that's where the robot and the Flex CNC come into place. We're following the logic, calling out the G-code programs that you need to be able to run. So you run that, say, to the CNC, I wanna run G-code program one, finish that, and then I wanna run G-code program two. You have the ability to do that. So anything that's hosted on the CNC itself that comes from Flex Control over can be able to run on the CNC. So from start to finish, from when you complete and create a G-code program to actually running it with a robot, we can manage all of those aspects. Very good. Uh, what is the expected life, uh, what expected service life of a UR10 cobot? So mean, mean time between failures are, are very subjective and it based, uh, it's very much based on the application, right? So we have a lot of customers that will decide to run their robots faster than the recommended, uh, recommended accelerations and speeds. So what we would like from our users is the opportunity to review that code prior to deployment and we'll always provide feedback with that code that's been written to make sure that everything is optimized and you can expect a, a long uh, long lifetime out of the robot. Uh, uh, this is me asking, <laughs> but I assume that's the same. The, the reader, at, the, the viewer asked about the UR10, but I assume your answer applies to virtually all of your models, right? I mean, it doesn't vary from model to model. So I just wanted right. to clear that point. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Robert. Yeah. Uh, do you ever run into issues with clients that are nervous about remote support? 
Uh, yeah, I think any time that you're connecting a device on the internet uh, and onto a network uh, is always something that can be, uh, you know, something that you can be nervous about uh, doing, especially if it's something that's new. Um, we provide ways within our Flex Connect platform that are, you know, security protected. We have people that are dedicated just to security uh, on the Flex Connect platform. So we'll work with you with your IT requirements and be able to provide you something that allows you to feel safe and secure with your setup. And one of the other things to fall back to, we don't initiate any changes on your robot unless you give us permission to be able to do that. So that's something where you have to enable permission on there and then allow us to be able to come on remote. We can have visibility of things. We can't change anything without you interfering and allowing us to be able to do that. So we do those things to give you kind of control over your setup from both an IT perspective and from an operations perspective so that you know we're not messing with things without your permission. Okay. Um this viewer asks, what type of maintenance is needed? Um, I assume there may be maintenance needed on, you know, throughout the whole installation uh, on the arm and on the, uh, on the, you know, on the end of arm tooling. So maybe you both have some comment on that. What type of maintenance is needed? Uh, I'll answer to the E-Series robot specifically. So we don't have any maintenance requirements, no batteries to change out in joints or anything like that. So you you put the robot into service and it'll continue to operate for you. I'll let you speak a little bit more to your your hardware, but it's, it's, it's the same thing. plug and play. Yeah, yeah, it's all, you know, we're using uh, trusted uh, hardware with what we're setting up. So, uh, and we're doing robust testing uh, beforehand <laughs> to make sure that things are running. So, uh, you know, um, failures in the field are, are few and far between and, and there's no real maintenance for it. Great. Uh, can you, tie in can you also tie automated visual inspection into a cell like the one you're showing uh, he offers the example of adding key ins, uh and others you know vi visual devices like that yes absolutely visual inspection um, goes hand in hand with a lot of our applications whether it's vision guidance or actually inspection of parts uh, we do have all the communication protocols to make that happen Yep, and also too, uh, Keens can provide uh, ways to be able to measure your parts after uh, post finishing, so you can see uh, what the dimensions of your part after, and you can actually apply those as real time offsets to um, to the robot and then to the CNC machine. So you can use it in both capacity for an inspection and also for validation that your parts are within spec once they're finished, um, to allow you to be able to uh, essentially go do that. Do you have wearable robot arms to extend workers' mechanical strength? Uh, sorry, Robert, could you repeat that? Did you say wearable? Yeah, it sort of caught me by surprise, too. <laughs> Do you have a wearable robot arm, you know, like a uh, a, a, uh, a wearable that, that, that would be sort of like to enhance a worker's uh, mechanical not mechanical strength, but physical strength in picking up products or grinding products or something like that. He's asking about wearable devices. Got it. Uh, we don't have wearable devices, but we have partners that make um, payload extenders and things like that that will support and enhance the payload of our particular robot. When it comes to programming the robot itself, we do have other options outside of our typical teach pendant that will include gaming pads and joysticks and things like that so that you can utilize just a single point for teaching your robot. But um, nothing okay. from a wearable standpoint. That's a little out there. <laughs> I probably should have skipped that one. <laughs> okay. uh, let's see. Oh boy, um, someone wants to know here, how can he become a UR dealer? What are the requirements for uh, for becoming a part of the UR network? Sure, um, I would say reach out to us um, through our online portal, put a request in there and they will redirect any kind of inquiries towards our channel management team. Okay.
Sorry, guys, just trying to read these questions quickly here. Uh, Robert, no. while you're while you're looking for another question, kind of going back to the the, uh, the question that a customer had about overall mean time between failures and, and what regular maintenance look like, we would love to have conversations with those specific customers look into exactly what the application is that they're doing, and then we can provide them some specific data to that application as it varies from application to application, but we can come up with uh, solidified answers. Okay, thank you. Here's one. Can you simulate a robot path before running it to ensure that the program won't crash into the machine? Uh, I would say that's probably our application engineers on site that help do that. But um, there are third party softwares to do simulation. Uh, it's more of a, a pre-programming setup. So you can create in your environment and then be able to, uh, to program simulator. URL has a simulator as well to be able to uh, build your programs before you go on site. So you can be able to use that. Um, so there, there are ways to be able to do that. Um, when you're on site though, I think Silas probably agree. The best thing to do is reduce the speed and watch it closely. <laughs> okay. Does the 20 kilogram limit include the weight for the lifting gripper as well as the payload it is picking up? Does the 20, yeah. Does the 20 kilogram limit include the weight of the lifting gripper as well as the payload? Yes. So the 20 kilograms include anything that you would have to put in on the end of the arm to be able to handle your product. Yes. Okay. Um, here's another question uh, inquiring about the, you know, the selection and, and benefits involved. Uh, where in the setup, production, retooling, and quality can these benefits be applied? Or maybe... Can these benefits be projected? Uh, the business benefits of a cobot installation. Where in the setup, production, retooling, and quality can these benefits be anticipated? I think my answer to that is going to be immediately, right? So mm -hmm. as soon as you have that full system implemented and making chips, you are able to improve your quality. You're able to calculate what your throughput's going to be on that machine, talk about OEE, uh, and really have a strong understanding of what that looks like. So I would say almost immediately, which differs a little bit from you know, how long it takes to pay that system back, but you get that almost immediate return on the system. Exactly, and that's why we're always looking to be able to do that rapid design and integration uh, and be able to give you something that is running parts by the end of the time that, that, uh, that we finish and leave to give you those benefits, you know, essentially day one that your robot shows up. Is the UR simulator subscription-based? The UR, UR version is not. Okay. So. Yep. All right. Okay. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Yeah, very well. You're very welcome. This has been an excellent presentation, and I want to thank our speakers, Silas Neal and Tyler Bouchard, and our sponsor, Universal Robots. On behalf of New Equipment Digest and American Machinist, have a great remainder of your day. All right. Thanks, Robert. Thanks, everybody. <laughs>